Good morning. Uh, my talk will discuss the transformation of the landscape in the, and increasing uh, evidence for globalization in the Tremtes Valley during the transition from the Middle Bronze Age to the Late Bronze Age. Uh, the main goal of this presentation is to show how the landscape was intentionally transformed by the inhabitants of the Tremitas Valley as a result of local and foreign interactions. Therefore, we will look uh, at the site pattern and at the landscape use, which will be highlighted in the second part of the presentation and at the important objects, which will be discussed in the third part of the presentation. But first, we will look at uh, the context, at the, which, what happened during that transitional period uh, the, the, the transition from the Middle Bronze Age to the Late Bronze Age, which is locally termed in Cypriot archaeology uh, the Middle Cypriot III and the Late Cypriot I period. This transitional period between the Middle and the Late Bronze Age is characterized by the emergence of uh, proto-urban coastal centers and a more complex and stratified society. Uh, the complex, the village communities of the pre previous periods are gradually replaced. This is especially clear from the mortuary data. Uh, for example, where we have uh, ec from extramural burials to intramural burials. Cyprus is also moving away from isolation towards an increasing participation in local and foreign exchange networks. Additionally, we see the first evidence uh, for a writing system. There is also a discussion, a scholarly discussion, if the political economic uh, power was centralized at Enkemi, uh, at a so-called fortress, uh, or that regional powers were quite independent. Um, these societal changes are also reflected in the site pattern. Uh, these coastal proto-urban centers immerse, especially along the south coast, which are indicated on the, on the slide. Uh, they are moving away from uh, the more already stratified uh, sites on the north coast, Vasilia, Vunus, and Lapitos. There are also what they call in fortified sites in the inland, center around Ayasos Omenos, which has been postulated that these fortifications were possibly uh, protecting the trade routes from the copper mining uh, area in the foothills of the Trodos uh, to Enconi. In this way, we see the emergence of a hinterland for trade and communication from the Trodos to, uh, to Enconi. Um, there is an ongoing debate if uh, the emergence of uh, social certification occurred quite swift or if this was already uh, happening at the, the north coast at, uh, in, and that the, the emergence of a social uh, complex and certified society already was happening at the north coast. Um, but now we will turn more to the topic of the, uh, the talk with uh, the transformation of the landscape in the Tremitos Valley. First, I will introduce the Tremitos River Valley. It's a river that runs from the Trotos foothills up to the coast. Um, it has a quite intermittent character and a heavily meandering run, which makes it also quite unsuitable for navigation with the boat. It is de deeply incised in the chalky uh, limestone um, landscape. Important to mention is an older Tremitos River arm, which runs from the Salt Lake, which, which is now a Salt Lake, and in the late Bronze Age it was a lagoon, up to the eastern arm of the Tremitos River. So it, it connects the, the Salt Lake with the lagoon. Uh, this, the lagoon was in the late, was, the Salt Lake was in the late Bronze Age, one of the finest sheltered natural harbors of the island. Uh, the river wells up near the Copper Ridge uh, area, just north of Stavrovini, uh, which is indicated on the slide. In this area, also rivers running uh, east and north uh, are also originating in this area and connecting the inland, especially around Aya Paraskevi, Alhambra, Ayososomenes, uh, with the, the, the Tremitos Valley and the Larnaca Bay. Um, in this way, the, the, river in, uh, the river could have been used in dry summer months uh, for transport using pack animals. Um, this, this slide shows that the, during the Middle Cypriot III and the Late Cypriot I, uh, the distribution of sites indicates clearly that sites are located around, along the river and along the, the lagoon. Um, this diagram shows also that there is a high increase in the number of sites if we 
compared to the earlier parts of the Middle Bronze Age, and then there is a rise to the, the end of the Middle Bronze Age. Um, during, first we will have a look at the site pattern at the start of the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, there are six sites. There's not really a coastal site uh, active, uh, not really a harbor. The most important site seems to be Arpera, uh, indicated uh, over there in, on the slide. Uh, it's, it has a typical Middle Cypriot location, three to four kilometers inland in a fertile river valley, close to a crossroad of of land and river routes. Other sites in the Tremetus River Valley are located, located around the lagoon, but actually not really close to the shore. This may indicate a low interaction with the sea or a low involvement in seagoing activities during this period. There are hardly any imports in the site's assemblages during this uh, period, in the Middle Cypriot period. The limited mortuary data sets of the sites in the, in the Tremetus Valley rather indicate a pastoral society and village communities as elsewhere on the island, except perhaps at the northern coast. This, uh, in comparison to the former slides, it's clear that there is something going on uh, at the end of the Middle Bronze Age. There is clearly an increase in the number of sites and a changing site pattern. The inhabitants of the river valley founded new sites, indicated in green here, at strategic interfaces in the landscape to facilitate trade and communication. Um, Hala Sultan Teke, which consists of different side parts, emerges as a coastal center at the shore of the lagoon. Kalogorio is founded at the interface between an old river arm uh, and the Tramitos River. So the, there is a, a connection, a new site a leading from, which controls the, the movement from uh, the lagoon to the Tramitos River. Klavdia, is founded at the conjunction of two river arms of the Tremitos River. Um, this transforming landscape in, during this period is also visible in the site structure of Hala Sultan Teke and other sites in the Tremitos Valley. This slide, for instance, shows the dispersed structure of Hala Sultan Teke with the core of the site at Visaja and outlying site parts at Melisari and Tripes all within a radius of about 900 meters. The site structure did not, con did not consist of a continuous build-up area, but rather of open spaces between different site parts. Uh, for example, this is also the case for Maroni. Uh, this may reflect a rather heterogeneous social stratification. Uh, furthermore, this dispersed site structure may represent groups from abandoned villages in order to take part in a new exchange opportunities, as already suggested by Keswani some long time ago. These intra-site changes uh, are also attested at other sites in the Tremetos Valley, especially at Arpera, which also has four sites uh, uh, consisting, forming one site. This is also visible at Laksha Turiu, uh, but due to the limited time, I will not discuss this in detail. Um, if we zoom out, it's, there is also an emergence of a hinterland in the Tremetos Valley. The Middle Cypriot III period, then the Late Cypriot I period, sees also the emergence of a hinterland system in the Tremetos Valley as a consequence of this involvement in uh, international trade. Ala Sultan Teke acts as a coastal gateway and five hinterland sites are located on the Tremetos riverbanks. Additional hinterland sites were located north of Hala Sultan Teke on the northern bank of an older Tremetos River arm, connecting the lagoon with the Tremetos River. Traders coming down had the option to take the direct connection to the, the lagoon by following the old Tremetos River arm, diverting in the direction of Kalogorio, and south to Larnaca, Lakshaturiu, and ending in the lagoon. Alternatively, traders could also follow the, rev the river downstream in the direction of Klavdia and Arpera. Traders could go down to Arpera, where they had the possibility to go overland uh, to Hala Sultan Teke or continue to the mouth of the river. Unfortunately, uh, there has not been any sign of uh, an archaeological site near the mouth of the river. Uh, now we will take a closer look at the imports during this period, um, especially at uh, the pottery, which may be evidence for a, an increasing globalization. 
this slide shows a distribution of two types of imported drugs, which are considered as chronological markers for the, for the transition from the Middle to the Late Bronze Age on the island. The earliest Syro-Palestinian variants from the Tel el Yehudia drugs occur at three sites in Cyprus, in, at Arpera, Dumatuskuru, and Flamudi. The later Egyptian uh, variants occur at three sites, Arpera, Hala Sultan Teke, and Klavdia. <coughs> Only 11 red burnish jugs have been excavated <coughs> on Cyprus, and six of them occur at sites in Larnaca Bay, um, of, at Arpera, at Hala Sultan Teke, and Livadia, which is a site north of the lagoon, uh, near the mouth of the Archelangelos River, uh, and it, which is in fact a predecessor of Kition. Um, Two other types of artifacts show an, an early regional involvement within the Eastern Mediterranean trade network. The earliest Canaanite jaws excavated in Cyprus date to the Middle Cypriot to Late Cypriot transition, uh, of which four have been excavated on the whole island. Uh, one at Arpera and the others at Enkemi, Calavasos and Calopsida, showing the, the importance of these uh, sites at the eastern and uh, southern coast. The occurrence of these Canaanite jar during these early stages of late Cypriot must be seen as, the, as one of the commodities the Cypriots received from the foreign trade partners, in, especially in exchange for copper. Noteworthy is also the presence of one of the earliest important cylinder seals at Ala Sultan Teke. Arpera may have played an important role within the earliest uh, Cypriot involvement in overseas exchange. This is materialized in the presence of one of the earliest Canaanite jaws and the presence of the earliest variants of Tel el Yahudia and Syrian red burnished wares. These foreign commodities reflect the importance of Arpera in the formation of the hinterland in the Tramitos Valley. This overview makes clear that the inhabitants of the Tramitos Valley intentionally start to organize their landscape as a response to an increase in foreign interaction at the start of the Middle Cypriot Tree period. Foreign goods were accepted, especially in exchange for copper and perhaps other raw materials as wood. This transformation is clearly visible in the, site, in the local site pattern with the emergence of coastal harbor sites and hinterland sites. The foundation of sites at strategic, at strategic topographical interfaces and the use of the river in order to facilitate trade and communication. Important goods testify of an early involvement of these sites in the Tramitos Valley in international exchange networks. The transition from the Middle to Late Bronze Age was in the Tramitos Valley a true age of globalization.